Hey, this is Bethany, and today I'm going to show you how I go from, you know, a bit of acne scarring, being pretty pale, having a lot of redness to cover, to good enough coverage that I can wear it to work every day, but also pair it with more dramatic makeup like this type of foundation routine. This is a fair skin foundation routine with a lot of tips in it, and I'm really going to be talking more thoroughly about some of the products and tools I use. So hopefully this will help you all out. A lot of you have been giving me questions regarding like fair skin foundation routines. This is a foundation routine where my freckles can show through a bit on my forehead because I do have freckles on my chest, but it's still enough built up coverage that I feel confident and I can pair a lot of makeup looks with it. So if you want some fair skin tips and then just some general foundation tips, keep watching this video and let's proceed. All right, so to start my foundation routine, I'm gonna just take you into some steps that I would normally do. Sometimes if my face is already oily before I begin, I do take some blotting sheets to remove any extra oil. I'm a super oily skin person. It really builds up around my nose and my forehead. So I just kind of like to focus on those areas. That way when I'm putting down all the other products, I'm not putting them on top of a layer of oil. Mind you, if I just wash my face in the morning, I usually skip this step because I'm already moving on to doing all this and getting to work. And for primer, I have been using this Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. So it's a two-in-one primer. It's very lightweight. It absorbs into the skin very nicely, and it doesn't have like that silicone texture that tends to make foundations feel like they're sitting on top of my skin. This just has like a really slippy texture, and it really absorbs into the skin, and it does it pretty quickly. So I can usually put on my foundation in just a couple minutes. And now we're gonna begin with coverage on my face. And just a heads up, I want to give you all, my skin has been a lot better than it's been previously. I just recently got two stress breakouts because I've been filming the CoverGirl and Allure Incubator series and like my skin really responded to it. Also, I'm kind of on a hormonal time frame right now. So I think now, if any, would be the best time to show you my foundation routine because it shows you there are things I have to cover, including this little zit here. So, starting off with my routine, I'm going to go to an oldie but a goodie, my Maybelline Age Rewind Circle Eraser. I like to use this underneath the eyes, and although I wish it was paler, the thing I like about it is I can put a foundation or a concealer on top of it, and this has kind of like a really fluid texture where it keeps whatever products that are under my eyes from looking more on the dry side. Now for foundation. I've been using for at least like three months this CoverGirl Vitalis Healthy Elixir Serum Foundation. It's got a lot of like vitamins and minerals in it like vitamin E, B3, B5. So it's loaded with beneficial vitamins and then it also has an SPF of 20. So it is in theory not only supposed to be your foundation but it's also supposed to be good for your skin giving you some benefits in those vitamins and minerals. I can't tell you really whether <laughs> that works. It's all topical. Surely some of it absorbs and does some things but I haven't noticed like a significant difference from using just the foundation. Now something we need to talk about immediately. I'm pale as hell. This foundation is not pale as hell. And I love CoverGirl foundations. In fact, the older one I used to use is paler than this one. It's a little bit more pink tone. But CoverGirl's palest shade in this 705 is basically like a beige. It is way too tan for me. So what I do is I lighten my foundations to make it work. And then I also use paler concealers. So here are two lightening products I use on a regular basis. The first one is the NYX White Pro Foundation Mixer. It is just pure white foundation. It doesn't have like a super pigmented formula to it, but it doesn't really water down my foundations either. But it does for sure have the ability to lighten my foundations and I often do like a one to one ratio. Like I do as much foundation as I do the white mixer and I get the color that I want. Then the other white mixer I use is by The Body Shop and these also have white pigment in them but the difference in them is that they do have pink pigment in them as well so they can offset a rather orange or yellow foundation. The downside of using this one is that it has a dropper which I don't find to be as convenient for getting a lot of product. The dropper's just a bit slow and the formula is quite a bit thicker than my NYX foundation is, or at least it feels to be because of the way it's delivering. So like if I'm in a hurry, I use the NYX one, but if I really wanna get it true to color and make it a little bit, just a little bit more shade adjusted and pink, then I use this one. So I love both of them. I'm just gonna be using this one today with the CoverGirl. So I'm just gonna mix these on the back of my hand. I'm doing just a little pump, not a full pump of the CoverGirl. 
put some drops on this. I want an equal portion of each. And again, you'll see it's much slower using this because we've got to dip in, grab a drop. All right, so now we're gonna mix this on the back of my hand. And still, this wastes quite a bit of product because I have to do one-to-one -one portions of it. I just wish brands would make paler foundations. Nearly all of my favorite brands of foundations do not make them pale enough. Okay, so here's what it looks like. On the left, we've got the lighter one. I could stand to add more white drops. And on the right, we have the original. So you can definitely tell the difference in how much darker the other one is. And I, I could stand to even work more and make it paler to fit me, but that is what it looks like mixed. All right, so next I'm gonna take my finger and just dot this in the main five points of the face. To smooth out my foundation, I usually use one of these brushes. So I've got my high-end favorite and my cheap favorite. This is the Sigma F82 Round Kabuki brush. I've had it for five or six years and I just, it improves any foundation I use and I love it. But if you want a dupe for it that's almost as good, this is the e.l.f. Foundation Blurring Brush. They both have similar densities. I just do happen to like the Sigma one slightly better. So I'm gonna take my brush and start working the coverage out from the middle of my face. If I have some bad acne, I kind of usually focus on that towards the end, just because I don't want to get my brush dirty with any like contamination too much, um, and I usually focus concealer on that a bit more. So you'll see I'll come to get this little guy later. And then I dip back to my hand and pick up a little bit more coverage as it's needed. I have a lot of redness in the center of my face and from acne scarring, so that's kind of where I like to focus my coverage. And then I'm also sure to blend it down the neck just for a more seamless transition. All right, now it's time for more coverage. I've got a little left over on my hand if I need it, um, but I'm gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in Fair. This is a rather neutral one. It works really good for me, and the great thing is it's actually pale. Um, there's a lot of concealers out there. You buy the palest shade, and it's so yellow. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of dot this concealer around my nose. Um, the places where I'm a little bit more red. I also use it as a primer on my eyelids, so I'm putting it up there. And then around my acne troubled areas. I'm just gonna blot this. And you wanna get softer motions, like little blotting motions as you diffuse out the coverage. That will make the concealer, you know, spread out, but not so much that you lose everything. And already you can see this is brightening up my face because this concealer is actually pale enough. Hallelujah. Now I'm gonna focus on the bad area. Blot this up and see it's just disappearing. Not completely, but as I blot it away. All right, so that is about as good as the coverage is gonna get on my face or as strong as I will allow because in reality, I have sun damage, I have freckles, I have redness around my chest, I have freckles up here at the top of my head. Um, I want some coverage focused in the middle, but I want it to diffuse out. I wanna take care of the acne and things like that, but I don't wanna get rid of everything that just kinda of will make this look more natural. So now to set this, I'm gonna take the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is actually a travel size I've, I've been trying for like a month or two. And I like it, but a little bit goes a long way. Like I just barely touch this powder and then I shake it off, swirl it in the lid, shake more off. Um, you just don't need too much of this at all. And this is the BH Cosmetics Pro Studio Brush. This is number two, it's just their powder brush. I believe this is synthetic. It just feels really soft and nice on the face and I love applying the powder with this. And I didn't show this step at the beginning, but a lot of the time I use the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. However, I dropped mine. I can't repair it, I love using it. Um, but that's how I normally prep my skin before I start all of this. And sometimes at the end, I kind of diffuse the product and make it melt together by spraying this again. So I love the Smashbox primer water. I just broke mine. So I'm gonna have to repurchase it or put it in another container. <sighs> and then for blush today, I'm gonna be using the Milani Powder Blush in Tea Rose. Um, this is just kind of a go-to matte blush I like to use a lot and then I can put my illuminator on top of it. But I like to apply blushes with a stippling brush because when you're fair skin, you can kind of overdo that a little bit too easily. So that's what I'm doing, just kind of stippling a little gentle motion here. Yes. All right, so I was interrupted by the mailman 
Uh, where did I leave off? I'm gonna contour, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use this Makeup Geek Contour Shade in Sunkissed. It's a fair skin bronzer. Now this one is a little, little, little bit warm than I would have expected to have liked, but as I've used it, I've actually grown to been like, yeah, this looks pretty good, so. And then for my contour brush, I'm gonna be using another BH Cosmetics one. It's from their Studio Pro line, and this is number three. So I'm just gonna touch a bit of this, tap off some excess. And then contour my cheekbones. When I contour, I mainly focus on my cheekbones because I just consider them to be like one of my good, one of my good qualities. Like, like I don't have good qualities, I guess, I don't know. Um, but that's what I focus on. I like to bring out my cheekbones. I kind of like to straighten my nose a bit. And then sometimes I define my jawline. Uh, but if I'm like going to work, I do not contour at all. Cause I don't have the time, like, uh, but if I'm going somewhere where I want to look cute, maybe going on a date with Ty, then maybe I'll contour. Because, you know, photo opportunities can happen any day, and then you end up tagged on a Facebook picture wishing you had contoured. <laughs> and then to contour my nose, I'm pretty lazy about it. Um, I usually pinch whatever brush I'm contouring with and then just kind of do this. Like just kind of turn it as I go, so I'm not like do 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 like that contouring out. I'm contouring in and narrowing the line of my nose, and that just kind of helps establish my nose and uh, make it look a little straighter. All right, so I just realized that for most of this video, my softbox lighting was against the wall, but turned on. <laughs> but I put it on um, just so it's kind of well balanced in here to where I like it. But you might see that my my shadows on my face have changed a little bit because my contour was looking weird and I was like, what is going on? And it was, it was those. All right, so that is my foundation, contour, and blush all finished up. I'm gonna skip highlighting for now because I'm trying to like save it for special moments. I don't know, but um, I want to show you all what this looks like up close and tell you why I like this routine. So let me bring you in just a little bit. All right, even though the rest of my makeup isn't finished, you can see there's obviously a very good improvement in my skin. Uh, the blush I used gives me a nice glow that looks really natural. I contoured, but nothing is so heavy that it doesn't look natural too. The thing I really love about this CoverGirl foundation is that most foundations get separated or flaky around my nose. And this truly does have a serum-like formula where it just kind of melts into the skin. It doesn't make my pores perfect, but it definitely softens them, makes everything look a lot more smoother in my nose area. Um, because that's where I show the most texture, and this is one of the best foundations I've ever tried for having less texture. I would just recommend working with less product and building up to more, and then see how much concealer you actually need, because I feel like the more I'm able to balance using this, and then just a little bit concealer, my skin is able to look more naturally beautiful. This really does give you like a natural, semi-flawless type of finish to it, but this is not like a full-on heavy, foundation routine and none of this looks heavy, which I really love. It just looks like I'm naturally got some good skin if you ignore this portion right here. And then I concealed this the best that I can for now because it is kind of like a crusty little mess. <laughs> uh, but still, that looks way better than what I started with. All right, now just to finish off, I'm gonna hop over to what I look like with my full makeup on, just so you can see foundation, full face and all. So let's get over to that. All right, so that is my finished foundation routine. As you can see, this is me wearing it like four or five hours later and it's still holding up pretty well. I do have to at least powder it once or twice through the day or use blotting sheets. But this foundation routine is one of the best ones I've had for myself in terms of what holds up while I'm at work, holds up while I'm doing lots of stuff throughout the day. Um, it's just been my go-to for like two or three months. So hopefully you all learned a lot of tips from this video or found some products that you might be interested in using. If you want, be sure to follow me on all my social media handles to see what's going on with me, some updates. You can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, all of the above. I update those things pretty regularly and I will have them linked down below. Also, if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe just so you can see future videos for me. I mean, if you want to, so. Anyways, I thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up or leave some recommendations in the comments down below. Thanks again and I hope you all have a good one.